there's a general and popular feeling that modern Christian art is not all that great. Now, why is that? Now, it's a great question, especially when there's, it's not always been true. Through history, some of the greatest pieces of art have been created by Christian people or have been based on Christian themes. Think, you know, Gothic architecture or the musical brilliance of Bach or the paintings of Rembrandt, to name a very few. But over the last 50 years or so, there's been a problem. And if you're an artist who, who wants to see how your faith intersects with your art, uh, it's good to know why quality in the Christian world is lacking. And there's several reasons worth exploring, but I want to begin with what I think is a foundational one. I'm going to call it over-spiritualized pragmatism. Now, what's that, you may ask? Well, pragmatism, simply put, is the idea that something is true or good if it works. Uh, now, if you have a good end that you're shooting for, that justifies the means of getting there. And over-spiritualized is that end justifies the means idea fueled by the illusion that we're doing righteous, holy, and spiritual things. Now, here's how that works in the arts and other areas of life. Now, I fully acknowledge I'm oversimplifying this point to make a point, but for the last 150 years or so, the church has boiled the basic and most important idea of the Christian life down to you need to pray to receive Jesus into your heart, what we call the sinner's prayer, because if you don't, you'll go to hell, but if you do, you'll go to heaven. Now with that, the primary goal for the church, and even the highest good, is to have as many people as possible pray the sinner's prayer. That's the mission. Now if the mission is achieved, we're doing good. If it's not, we're not. Now admittedly, that part of the mission, it's not entirely untrue, it's just incomplete. Uh, this narrow view of church and spiritual life creates some problems, and one of them is, if that's the highest good, what does that mean for living out the Christian life before I die and go to heaven? Now let's imagine I pray that prayer and I have a normal job, like say running a construction company. How do I gauge in the highest good, the mission, if I spend most of my time doing construction and running a business? Does the fact that I do construction even matter to my spiritual life or is it purely how I put food on the table? Well, the answers that people give sometimes are, if you're a business person, to make a spiritual impact, uh, you would need to do, one, try to lead people you work with uh, to pray the sinner's prayer, or two, you could lead a devotional uh, when you're on your breaks from your construction work, or three, the job makes money to give to the church or to missions organizations who will lead people to pray the sinner's prayer. Now, the work of construction itself is not really seen as an intrinsic good. Doing construction in that sense isn't seen as spiritual. It's spiritually valuable if it contributes to the mission. Take that example and apply it to any so-called non-spiritual job, from accounting to fixing cars or creating art, and you have the same problem. And with that mentality, uh, we'll create problems with quality. Now, how does that work? Well, if something justifies itself because it achieves an end, then the means is secondary, really. Uh, in this way of thinking, if you fund the mission or do something that achieves the mission, you've done a good thing. Uh, we're not very good at construction, but we gave $10,000 to the church, so we're good. Or we're terrible at fixing cars, but we led a couple of our mechanics to pray the sinner's prayer, so we've done good things. Now that thinking gets used on the arts even more because one, the arts are not seen by most people as being a necessity of life, like construction or fixing cars. But two, the arts in most people's minds are all about communication. So if you're going to communicate, you need to communicate the gospel, leading people to pray the sinner's prayer because that's the highest form of communication. And if you do the mission with your art, your art's good. If you don't do the mission with it, your art is either considered secular or simply not useful. Now this causes a twofold effect. One, the kind of material available for the artist to work with is very limited at that point. Uh, if I have to prioritize the message over any kind of means, by definition, I can't be very inventive. Uh, the message has to make its way into what I'm doing, and I have to force it oftentimes. And creativity is about you know, finding new and different ways of presenting things. But two, by this philosophy, if I do present the message inside the art, I automatically get deemed as good, even if the art itself is really bad. After all, the art wasn't the goal, the message was. Now, it's not hard to see how this is problematic when applied to other areas, and this wrong application does show up. Think about that construction company. Say that's what you do, and the only way you can think of being important to your spiritual life is something like you fund the mission, or you can be a witness by naming your company Jesus Loves You Construction Company. Uh, you'll likely slide into some of these bad practices. And in the course of my pastoring career, I've seen this happen. Somehow we think we do 
good work if we're doing Jesus stuff. So we skip over worrying about actual quality work in our construction or dealing with people fairly as long as we're about the mission. In that case, the goal is no longer well-built homes or well-treated customers or honoring workers with solid wages or good benefits. Those aren't the gauge for good work. Having the Christian name on the van is the important thing. Now, thankfully, that outlook is not how the Bible expresses things. If you look at the entire Christian worldview and the idea of the kingdom of God, you can safely say construction is, in and of itself, an intrinsic good. First, because people are created in the image of God, and God set man to build and form and fashion. In other words, construction itself can achieve God's purposes. Also, by running a successful company, you're giving others employment and an ability to raise families and replenish the earth, right? So let's transfer that idea over to art. In another video, we talked about how art and creativity are, according to the Bible, part of the root system of reality. God is the creator and people are creators. So the very act of doing art is an expression of humanness the way God designed it. In that way, the very act of creating is a positive good. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. You don't have to stick the message on it to make it good. Now we can learn this from God himself. The Bible says that God's eternal power and divine nature can be clearly seen, being understood from what has been made. In other words, you can look at creation and see God, even if you don't see him. Notice God didn't write, Jesus loves you and all the trees, or this sunset brought to you by the God of the Bible written in the clouds. He didn't have to. People see mountain ranges, fields of flowers, or a beautiful sunset, and something in them goes off and says, God, your art can function the same way. A phenomenal piece of music, a well-produced film can point to something beyond itself. Now what's interesting is as Christians, we believe that because we also see it work in the opposite direction. Most of us believe that films and music have had a tremendous impact on our culture and not always in a positive way. And we all know this rarely happens through direct preaching in the context of, say, a film. As a matter of fact, most people hate preachy films no matter what they're preaching, at least as long as it's too obvious. Hollywood has learned that lately with so-called woke films being duds at the box office. If you preach being woke very directly and very annoyingly, people hate it. But if you place wokeness in the characters you love in the film and into the story, you get the woke message across in a lot more powerful way. Michael Jones of Inspiring Philosophy does a great job uh, with this subject in this video. But the best message films are the ones who communicate their message inside a compelling story, which also includes great acting, cinematography, great direction, Lord of the Rings being a great example. That's why it's so important for Christian artists to have a belief system about art that frees them up and fuels their passion for creating. Now for more on this, see this video. Hope that helps. See you next time.